Hello, this is Friendly Cat, and we have an adventure today. We will be playing as Uruguay on a world conquest equivalent, as we'll be taking out all the majors, and we will be doing this on a historical. Uruguay is the weakest, I think, of the new five uh, Trials of Allegiance nations with their own focus trees, but it has one claim to fame. It is the only country that I know of that can conquer the world as a democracy, so that's what we're going to be trying for today. We'll take our usual first focus for extra political power and then move on over and start taking focuses that give us military factors after 35 days because we're going to need to build up. Ooh, our first interesting event, Germany's going civil war. That's going to be very fun to see how that works out. As we take another focus with a military focus, we, focus we'll be watching very closely to see how the world reacts because in an AS Rokor run, that's what we like to do. These are going to be our assault troops in this early war. 12 with 6 infantry battalions with support artillery. They won't last long, but they'll do very well in our early wars. And with our first 100 political power, let's take improved worker conditions. Our stability is a little bit low, so let's do what we can to move it along and raise it on up. After... We take a second military factory. You know what? Let's take re rekindle old gripes. We can launch an attack on both Brazil and Argentina. It's a 70-day focus. Very interesting uh, little focus on this Uruguay, Uruguay tree, which is shared with Paraguay. We will also be taking Marines. Marines, as usual, very powerful with the Special Forces branch. And we'll be doing most of our assault, real assault troops as Marines. We'll also be continuing down the industrial branch as well. As we attack into Brazil, we will first uh, take actually on one more 35 day focus for just one more mill because we'll need it. And we'll push all of our firepower into that single province. We're going to focal point. The goal is to push through and if we can move around Brazil. They don't have enough troops to cover the ground. We don't really, but we have two with our single battalion cavalry. That's the dice roller division that you see on screen. And that's it. We're through. We're, we're done. Um, we can now move right on past Brazil, move around their troops because their country is far too large. When we get this event for taking that province, well, actually things are going pretty well. So we will continue and move on through Brazil. Uh, we're not going to do a whole lot of fighting along the way, just moving around them. Once we pass past 13 factories or more than 13, we can then start the gateway focus, which brings us down to our third research slot. So in this case, I stopped a focus and then went over, and you can see we're at 14. A royal wedding in Brazil. I don't think that actually happened because I'm pretty sure we controlled most of the land, but Brazil is just about done. Too easy. As we continue down the focus, what we really want to eventually get to is down that right side of that focus tree you see. So we need to control region Mesopotamia next, and then eventually we'll get the very powerful focus, which allows us to give, I think, one of the most powerful focuses in the game with division attack, division defense. So we do need to take one more little spot to head down there. When attacking or when even in combat, it's okay to pull back and let enemy divisions move forward and then envelop around them, even with weak two, uh, with those single battalion of cavalry. Just don't let them get strength depleted and they can hold out okay. And here we are. We're now pretty much done with Argentina as well. Once we've broken through into the back lines, our cavalry can now run around, run rampant. Argentina does not have the divisions to cover their land. And so again, the goal here is not necessarily to combat, even though it looks like it, just pin as we move around. We have this goal, reform the, I think it's the Federal League. Once we control a little bit of Argentina, we can move our, we can take those and core them. No political power, and it now it gives us, I think, six million core manpower, which is actually quite a bit. And there goes Argentina. Argentina and Brazil down. Uruguay is on the move. We are moving right along here. As soon as we finally get 20 command power, let's take that army advisor. We have very, very low war support, so it's taken a long time to get command power, but once we have it, we'll use it for the army XP. Ah, Italy declares war in Italian Union. That's an Italian civil war. It looks like Italy is going to be going democratic. Hmm, very interesting. Meanwhile, let's keep an eye on... Oh, UK is headed down a change in course. That looks like they might be going fascist. Interesting. 
once we get enough uh, army XP, we're going to then take the military spirit that allows us to make cavalry battalions for free because we'll later on we'll add a military police support unit, support battalion, excuse me, support company to this division. Now later on, we're gonna to wanna to take revaluation law here. It's a relatively powerful focus for 70 days. I think it gives around 18% base stability. Very nice. And our second uh, political advisor will be a stability. Uruguay has two good stability political advisors, which we like, and that will definitely help us reach that 100% stability, particularly considering how low our base war support is. Japan goes to war with China. Okay, so they're going historical. That makes sense. Not a big deal, except ooh, because we raised um, world tension so much, I think the UK actually guaranteed China, which means the UK is at war with Japan. This is really good for us. We really like this roll of the dice. This means two ma major nations are fighting each other, and that pushes the UK's stability low enough. They go into a fascist civil war. Oh, it just gets better and better. We like the whole world to be fighting each other because it allows us to move on. Continue to watch. Okay, and yes, Germany is actually going left side. You can see the right side of the focus. The democratic focus is not seen. That means they will not be going democratic. More good, more good news for us. It looks like the only major democratic nation has, is Italy. So they will guarantee a country like Mexico that will justify on. But I can't resist taking Mexico right now. Italy can't really help them out. And that uh, gives us a very close realm to the United States when we decide to attack them. This is our marine template. We'll eventually go up to 25 with marines with three lines of uh, artillery and then later on add a medium tank to the front. I don't think I've ever seen this before. After Democratic Italy wins, they puppet parts of Italy, but that makes them that much weaker. Mexico, as expected, um, did join the Italian faction. That, again, that would make sense. So we're at war with Italy as a faction. This is what our medium tank looks like interwar. Very helpful. Uh, effectively quadruples the attack power of our divisions. So we land here in Mexico. You may have seen this before. If you've seen some of my other videos, we land on and off the port. Mexico has not gone into civil war, so we don't have too much problem landing on the port. And with that, Mexico is effectively dead. Because they're part of the Italian faction, I won't be able to destroy them or... Um, excuse me, annex them, but we can absolutely capitulate them and take their factories as we move right through. Civil War in Britain, Empire ends. Oh, the fascist one, the fascist one. This is really good for us. Having a whole world, as much of the world go fascist, actually is good for the player. Um, don't be shy in doing small single battalion naval invasions around Mexico. There's no reason to fight through the mountains. All right, now in the middle of 1938, we're gonna get this event. We wanna take the middle option so that the Blanco party returns. When it does, we lose Terra and we lose that 20% political power and we gain a leader that has very fast justifications. There's no real good reason to go down this down right side to eventually become a democracy, uh, but we're gonna do it anyway because that's the fun of playing Uruguay. Our next uh, adventure takes us into Chile. Chile. It looks like the Mapuche tried to form their own little war or take one to a civil war. And Chile's not very strong to begin with. And when they split into a civil war, they're that much easier to just pick apart. And we also want to take, now that we've had that mid-July 1938 event, we're going to take a democratic advisor because we need to push up democracy, democracy support so that we can eventually take the referendum and flip to be a democracy. That's the whole real point of this run. Attacking into Chile again, not very difficult. Even the Mapuche I can't do much. Russia goes to war with Poland, so I guess there's no point in improving relations for the lend lease them. Poland's probably going to collapse pretty quickly, but uh, Russia, this is again more good news. Every passing couple months is like, oh great, more good news for us because we want to see the whole world fighting each other. Again, because that makes it that much easier for us to attack. It gives them much less likely to be able to gang up on us. Poland has now joined with Italy. And this is it. This is the focus, unique, I think, to Uruguay, anti-imperialism. It allows a democracy to go to war, aggressive war, on any country. It basically negates all of the democracy, you know, not being able to justify in other countries. Here we are going into Paraguay next. Let's start cleaning up South America, one country at a time. As Portugal goes to war, civil war, more civil wars, the better. This world is, a, this timeline is going a little bit wild, but it's still fun. 
So let's keep moving our way right along as we take out, oh, now Bolivia was actually guaranteed by Colombia. So Bolivia, I think, will join Italy. And when Colombia will join Italy, so that democratic faction, Italy is effectively the new allies. These are what my plans look like. Mixed roll, bomb locks on the front. Eventually they'll have self-sealing air tanks, drop tanks, and armor plating, and then machine guns in the second, and eventually the third slot when they become 1940 airplanes. The Great Chilean Earthquake, fantastic focus, gives us, I think, about 21% base stability, which is going to help us reach that 100%. Very nice event, even though, of course, I don't like earthquakes, of course. Just a good event in the game. Now we're going to clean up those Central American countries, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and eventually onto Panama. We're just really cleaning house on here just to prepare for a land bridge, I guess, a land connection between Mexico and Chile. And those don't put up too much of a fight as we head into Panama as well. We do have to naval invade around them, but again, not too much difficulty. Our army is getting much more powerful with each passing moment. Into Colombia, because we have Brazil, uh, Brazil's former land, Colombia, had most of their troops over there, and so our Marines are able to walk right into Bogota. I mean, they could definitely push if, uh, if Colombia had troops, but with that, Colombia will capitulate. Let's go after the United States. Why not? The U.S. will join Italy, but they don't even have enough troops to cover their border comfortably. I think it's because the, the former Canada is fascist, so they see that as a threat, um, but it doesn't really matter. We're just going to, we have enough strength to push right through them. The United States is going to be interventionist. Well, I was a little bit late for that, buddy. If you wanted to intervene, you should have done that like a year ago or two ago, because now we're going to open up, and Italy can't really help you that much with our subs. It's open rain. There are no troops on the border. The uh, United States just doesn't have the troops to defend, so we will just race right along to you. Washington, and with double collab governments, they will capitulate very quickly and give us a great deal of their factories. <sighs> This pretty much ends the run, to be quite honest. Once you've capitulated the United States, you've got so many factories and so large that you can't really fail, and it's just a matter of cleaning up. Uh, Ecuador, mountains, very difficult. Netherlands, no mountains, very easy. Uh, we'll just land right into the Netherlands and take them out as we continue to just expand pretty much as fast as we reasonably can. We're also going to do one division with three battalions of cavalry naval invasions all over the Dutch East Indies to take the rubber and secure it for our future air force. Going into Belgium, we're so, so much more powerful than they are and pretty much able to um, dominate most small to mid-sized countries. France joined Italy as well. I, I didn't have troops on the border. I was preparing to take Luxembourg next. That was maybe a mistake. I should have been a little bit more prepared, but I'm going to race troops because I think France, uh, you're in for a, a tough time. I'm not sure if joining Italy and going to war with us was so wise, uh, but maybe maybe there's a, there's a wiser thing they have that I don't know about because they just left Paris right open. Maybe it's like, you know what, a quick loss, few casualties. Let's just go and become peaceful. That's fine. One thing I also like to do makes is make cavalry units, like I call them scout units, with recon, support artillery, and engineers, and we're going to get those kind of mid-game to help our cavalry move along a little faster. Here we are. Oh, and now we're going to actually be going to war with Russia because I want to control the capitulation of Italy, and Russia is naval invasion, and Italy is moving right along, so by going to war with them, it allows me to push them back and control when we get the peace conference. Motorized divisions, 27 width, pretty standard, very powerful once you've got the trucks to make it work. You may notice that I'm moving around Italy. Avoid taking uh, those victory points because I want to control when they can pitch. I'm going to control the peace conference to the extent possible. Russia gets pretty rocked pretty hard. I mean, it doesn't blame. I mean, they don't have a very easy way to reinforce their troops. And we're going to take land. We're also going to take the Suez Canal. This ensures that not only do we have access to the canal in any future wars, but we can also deny the access to our enemies. As part of the British Civil War, um, they released they released uh, Suez. And we're keeping an eye on what countries are left. It looks like we can capitulate Italy without going to peace conference. So let's go ahead and take care of that and move along. Naval invading Britain. Uh, again, with these, ten, these quick 10-day justifications, I don't think Britain has much time to move divisions to their shore, and they've been fighting for so long, we're able to move through and capitulate them relatively easily. We're going to head through Spain, which also joined the fascist group, I guess the Japan Co-Prosperity Sphere. Yeah, there's really not much, and uh, they don't even have much 
much equipment and stockpile because they've been fighting for so long. They got kicked out of Ireland, of all things. But we'll move right through them. We'll take a bit of their land on is that Singapore and company. There's quite a bit of resources there. And just move on up. We're not planning to really move up into, the, into Southeast Asia. Albania, too easy. Uh, easily naval invasion with each passing again month. The troops are just getting more and more powerful. The aircraft becoming more and more powerful. So let's head into Peru as we prepare to take one of the last focuses, last important focuses for Urga, which lets us to core all of South America. Oh no, this isn't good. So Germany's trying to rekindle imperial set sentiment. I think what that means is that if Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Austria gain enough non-aligned support, they will form the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, and since they're at war with me, or at least Hungary is, that will push Germany at war with me. So I don't like that. Let's move along and uh, try to capitulate them as soon as possible. Greece, uh, not too many troops. They had actually gone to war with Turkey and lost. Yugoslavia, so tough. I mean, you know, I need to do better at doing naval invasions against Yugoslavia. They are very strong on those mountains, far too strong, particularly compared to how powerful my troops are. So good for you, Yugoslavia. I really need to find a better strategy because eventually I will push through, though, and capitulate you. Let's just see how that goes. And because they decided to never join a faction, they go into Annex and Peace Conference. I'll take it, nice and easy. As we continue to move through, now we're going to head up to Hungary. We're trying to race against the clock to avoid the formation of the Austrian and Hungarian Empire. Motorized troops are gaining far, far more power than they were before, and they're heading right through. After Hungary, it's on to Czechoslovakia. In the winter, this would be a very tough fight, those mountains and the snow and the cold. But in the summer, it's a breeze. As we take Romania, oh, it looks like Japan's gone to war with Russia. Oh my goodness, so every wish could, that it could come true is coming true. Everyone's attacking everyone, which makes them all that much weaker. So let's continue to move on up through Yugoslavia. And we're going to now take uh, the women's vote, which will permit us to flip Democratic. That's 10%. We intentionally held on to it until we had more than 50% democracy support as Czechoslovakia falls, and they go to peace conference, which means I think we've averted the whole Austrian-Hungarian empire issue. Heading into Russia, I'm not really focused on Russia. I mainly just want to form a wall with them and then you know kind of creep in if we can. Most of our troops are now going to work on Germany. Here it is. Here it is. It's time. We are now going to become the Democrats. We're a democracy. Uh, we get an okay advisor, okay main leader, 10% political power, a little bit of war support. Okay, I didn't, I didn't think this was going to happen, but they went to peace conference. I didn't really have much control over it. I should say control. Um, but we did okay. The primary purpose is to keep new countries from being formed since we are at war with all of the major countries. So we do have to clean up these puppets that were controlled by or created by Russia. I think these are all Russian puppets or... Uh, no big deal, just, um, just, you know, they created puppets, but they have no troops, so we can just send small divisions. Yeah, Type 3 subs, 1940 subs, clearance, carriers. Uh, yeah, it's getting out of control. So let's go after Germany. Germany, even though they've had years to build up, have no way to hold back. I think they have maybe 150 divisions, but they're spread across the lines, so our motorized, our infantry, blow right through them. All right, let's go take out another country with Germany gone, naval invading all around. Yeah, they tried to defend, they actually defended um, a little bit, but there they go. And I really kind of love these large battle plans when you finally reach this part of the war. We've just got infantry marching their way across Russia. Diplomacy with Iraq breaks down. Yeah, I don't think these uh, files were really made for a democracy going or attacking another country because it seems like every one of these is like, oh, it's the other country's fault when clearly we're the ones who's attacking them. And... That's peace treaty of the Soviet Union. We pretty much take everything because our war score is so high. I think Japan took a few countries, but no new puppets, which means we're on the final leg. Here we are, a landfall on Japan, so close to completing the last of our majors so we can finally go to peace on the port, off the port, quickly swarming around Japan. Um, they are the last major, the only major in their country, so we do not need to hold off capitulation. We just got to rush and take them as fast as possible. And here we are taking the last of the major victory points so that... Ah, victory. What an adventure. What an adventure. Uruguay sure was a lot of fun. I know that, you know, really relatively a small part of this run was actually done as a democracy, maybe just over a year, year and a couple of months. 
It just takes a long time to become a democracy, so I got there as fast as I reasonably could. Well, this was a lot of fun. Um, Uruguay starts off small. They may be the weakest of the new trial of allegiance nations, but they're still very strong and very powerful. I enjoyed playing them. I hope you enjoyed watching as well. I hope this uh, maybe helped your next ahistorical game or if you're thinking of playing Uruguay. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave below or if you have any ideas on any runs you'd like to see me try. Hope you have a great day and thank you very much for watching.